I would really appreciate it if you guys do me a favor and get on your feet and give this lady a beautiful ovation <clears throat> for the one and only Miss Rebecca Davis. If y'all know me, I'm a bit of a crier, and Tony's already trying to set the mood. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, if you don't know me, my name's Rebecca Davis, and I am the Medicare Wonder Woman. Because I'm known to take the wonder out of Medicare, right? This is the Medicare Summit. That's what we're here for, right? Sorry, not today. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the ACA opportunity, but before we get into that, um, we're going to talk a little bit about family and adventure and being parents in this industry. And like I said, I am the Medicare Wonder Woman, Rebecca Davis. Where's the clicker? And I have a very special guest today. He sold his first Medicare policy when he was six years old <laughs> to his papa. He's 10 years old. This is his first time speaking on stage. Please welcome my son. My name is Cannon Davis, and I'm the can of Cannonball Insurance Solutions. If you follow me on social media, you know we are on an adventure pretty much almost every weekend, or we try to be. We're doing 22 adventures in 2022. And today is number 10 for Cannon, since this is his first time on stage. When we leave here, we're going to, I think it's Midway, Utah, where there's like this crater that they teach scuba divers how to swim in. It's like a mineral thing. It looks really cool, that's all I know. <laughs> And we're going to do that. So that's going to be number 11. So this is our halfway mark in our 22 adventures for this year. And Cannon has prepared a joke for you all. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Cannon. Cannon. Cannonball Insurance Solutions. <laughs> You know, it's funny, as parents, moms, dads, you know, we wonder, we're gone a lot, and we work a lot, and we always kind of question, you know, we get the mom guilt, so we may get dad guilt, and there were some conversations about this the first night, and it wasn't going to be part of my speech, but I think it's important to address. I actually run a women's uh, mentorship group called WIN. If you're in it, applause, ladies. <laughs> And we talk about all kinds of things, not just insurance, and we do business building, but we also talk about our personal struggles. And of course, being a mom and being on the road or working until midnight, one o'clock in the morning during open enrollment, you're away from your kids. And we all develop, you know, mom guilt to some degree. But as I was talking to these other ladies the other night and reconfirming with them, they're beautiful women, they have beautiful hearts. There is nothing they're doing that they should ever feel guilty about because we are showing our children what it means to succeed yeah. and go after our goals. And it doesn't matter if you're a mom, if you're a dad, and I'm, you know, I was raised on the do as I say, not as I do parent mentality. Yeah, I find that a little bit hypocritical, my personal opinion. You know, do as I say is not to do. That's really comforting from somebody who's sitting on the couch all day watching Netflix and chill and not doing anything. You know, you can tell your kid, oh, go to school, be this, but if they've never seen the example, they have no idea what that looks like. So I find it a little bit hypocritical. So ladies, gentlemen, don't ever feel guilty. You're doing this ultimately for them. And they know it. Why does mommy work so hard? To get money. <laughs> <laughs> then what do we do with it? Get food and what we need. Very good. 
But if mommy gets more money, then what do we get to do? Buy stuff we want. <laughs> <laughs> we get to do adventures? Yes. <laughs> and trips? Yes. Where we can connect? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so would you rather mo have mommy at home all day doing laundry and we don't need to do those things, or would you rather see mommy go to work so we can do all those things? See mine go to work? <laughs> <laughs> Never doubt what you're doing. They see. And they know. Thank you, Cannon. I'm known to be a little bit of a klutz, so if I land face first, don't worry about it. It's happened. <laughs> That happened three days ago getting off the plane right in front of Danielle Crunkle. She had to pick me up off the ground. That's just what I'm known for. <laughs> so the ACA opportunity. How many of you heard there is no money in ACA? Raise your hand. Have you ever heard that? They lie. They lie. <laughs> Ten years ago, I got my start at State Farm. There's no money being a captive agent for an organization like State Farm if you're not the main guy. That's where there's no money. But there is a ton of impeccable training you can get with that. You know, somebody talked about the LOAs earlier. There is nothing wrong with being LOA. I started out as an LOA at State Farm, worked there for five years. Because I had that training, even though my child at the time was on Medicaid, I am now five years as an independent, and we are going to hit seven figures this year in five years. <laughs> But it starts because I had that baseline training. So if you're struggling and you have that option, don't be afraid to go do it. Don't listen to the Facebook groups and do that. If you're not making the kind of money you need because you don't know what the heck you're doing, go find somebody that does and work for them. Intern them. Chase them down. It doesn't matter. Get the education. Because I felt like State Farm was my five years of college. I didn't go to college. That was my college. So never look down on those opportunities. Now, because of State Farm, a lot of people don't know this, I was there 10 years ago, right at the cusp of ACA. State Farm actually did ACA. They even had their own hotline to the government for it. A lot of people don't know that. So I learned the ACA opportunity when I was selling property and casualty insurance. We were the number top 50 in the nation, and I was the only person selling health insurance out of that office. I gravitated toward it. I loved it so much better than PNC. Guys, we live in Texas. Hailstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods. PNC is a nightmare. And if you do it, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so when I left State Farm, I knew ACA. I didn't know a clue about Medicare, but I knew ACA. So I started my business selling ACA, well, I learned Medicare. I wrote my first 100,000 in 45 days in ACA. Because I was smart and I quit right before open enrollment. <laughs> and just jumped right in. But in 45 days, I made my first 100,000 in ACA. Which allowed me then to learn Medicare. Because I wasn't stressing. We were a one-income household at the time. My husband was deployed on a... Carrier, if you all remember about five years ago, there was that beef with the Soviet Union where they were like over our Navy. That was my husband's ship. Also, if you all watched Top Gun yet, Maverick, that was also shot on my husband's ship while he was there. He can tell you all about it. <laughs> and he will if you corner him. <laughs> I was two years into the business when I bought my building. Medicare did not buy my building. ACA did. Yeah. Okay? Do we kill Medicare? Obviously. But I want you to know, ACA bought this. ACA got my start, really. Because there is huge opportunity here. And more so coming up than ever before. You saw some of the, these so the next couple of slides are going to look a little bit familiar. Thank you, Brad Hannon. We're still in the room. But uh, my math is correct. <laughs> <laughs> 
So depending on what state you're selling in, whether you're selling for a state exchange or an FFM state, the average commission is between $9 and $30 per member per month. So if you've got a family of four, you've got to take 9 or 30 or whatever times it by four per month. So I look at it like this. The average household on the average commission is about 20 bucks a head. If you sell 1,000 of those, that's going to pay you $20,000 a month times 12 is 240,000. Who would like an, an extra quarter of a million dollars in their bank account? This is doable. This is doable in the next six months. In 2022, now we're just gonna talk about FFM states right now, because state exchanges are a whole nother beast, and that's a whole nother conversation. So we're just gonna talk about the state exchanges, which is most of them and the easier ones to work. In 2022, there was almost 15 million renewals. And there was almost 3 million in new business. Now there is 10,000 new to Medicare every day. What does that work out to? About 3 million, 650,000, something like that, if my math is right. So there is almost as much new business here as there was in Medicare. And that's fixing the change. A lot. So the opportunity. Medicaid, who's familiar with it? Who hates it? Do you know because they've kept expanding it and expanding it and expanding it and releasing it longer and longer, there's millions of families that actually should not be on Medicaid right now. They don't qualify. But because of COVID, they keep expanding it. Well, that's fixing the end. Right now, there's between 5.3 and 14.2 million people fixing to lose their Medicaid that will come over to the ACA floor. This is projected to go away in October. It was supposed to go away in July. They did re-push it through, but it's expected to go away in October. So just off of Medicaid, there is four, five times more business here this fall than there is in Medicare. And if you did the math on the average $20 app, if you sell one person, one policy, that's like a renewal to Medicare. If you sell a two-person household, that's like a new to Medicare. If you sell three or more, well, you just hit the slot machine. <laughs> Correct. There is no chargebacks because they pay out monthly. It's an automatic renewal. So if you're new and don't have a renewal business, sell 100 of these. You'll have $2,000 coming in every month. Just like that. ACA also refers people 10 times to Medicare. You want a referral business? Do ACA. You get the first 100 people on there, they just start coming in. Where'd you hear about me? My friend, where'd you hear about me? My mom, where'd you hear about me? My dad, my neighbor. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. The second feature opportunity, the family glitch. Who's familiar? Who's not familiar? Who has no idea what the family glitch is? Awesome, most of the room. <laughs> so the family glitch, long story short, when they accepted Obamacare and they said, well, if you have group health and if it's affordable, you have to take it, you can't get subsidized health. Well, that's great and all for the employee who gets free health care or has it paid for by 50%. But what about the wife or the husband and the kids who are paying full price? And group health is not cheap. Family foreign group health, about $4,000. $1,500, $4,000, even when the employee is paid for. Biden signed an executive order in April in hopes to eliminate it. Now, it's not eliminated yet. This is in hopes to. But that is Biden and Kamala Harris, if we can see her name, is objective is to get as many people on ACA as possible. So they're trying to push this through. And on the family glitch, that's going to add another 5 million people that will be eligible for ACA now that never been before. 
And these are people that have inquired about it already. I have stacks and stacks of old leads for the last 10 years of people I've always had to turn away because they had pre-existing conditions, so you couldn't do a sh other health product, Brad. <laughs> I had to turn away and say, nope, sorry, you got to take your group health or nothing. Kids cerebral palsy because parents are on group health. You know, cancer, heart attack, stroke, whatever. They'd be turned away. Not anymore if they pass this. Now, there was a new thing that came out three days ago. I don't know if y'all read it. Nehu has submitted a counter letter on this. They're concerned that between the Medicaid opening up and the family gillage opening up, ACA will crash because the carriers won't be able to handle it, the exchanges won't be able to handle it, and there's probably a lot of truth to that. So Nehu has proposed to let the carriers and the government and everything get their ducks in the order and actually have the family glitch end for January of 2024. At first I was like, oh man. But then I was like, wait a minute. What the heck? That buys me time. Because I gotta still enroll 14 million Medicaid people. <laughs> I don't got enough LOAs <laughs> or enough field agents. I need more people. So that buys me time to get more people. We got plenty of business just with that. And then once we get all those people set up, Guess what? The family glitch comes in and we just roll right into another year of just enroll, 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 enroll. The money is there, there is no doubt. But we don't just do this for the money. That's why most of you are Medicare agents, because you like helping people. And you're like, well, these people could do it themselves. No, they can't. They screw up their taxes. They have no idea how to figure out their income, their children, the divorce. Well, he, I pay his insurance, so I get to put him on policy even though he lives over there. No, that's not how this works. I'm sorry. Wish it did, but it doesn't. But there are many, many families out there that need us. Just in the last two weeks, I had a family, horse people, their sons, 17-year-old and 10-year-old, were coming back from a roping, I think it was. The tire blew out on the rig, flipped the truck, told the truck, killed the horse. The 10-year-old was ejected and was underneath the truck, the dually. His 17-year-old brother with glass in his head and bruises all over him crawls out of the truck and proceeds to try to lift the truck off of his brother. Bunch of witnesses there by now. They get there. They're like, leave him be. Emergency's on his way. He's like, no, no, no. That's my little brother. I begged him to come with me. We have to get him out from underneath the truck. I don't know these people. But they're all over Facebook right now in our area. Pray for Porter. They don't know what's going to happen. Possible paralysis. We're not sure yet. He's 10. Here's the thing. The family had no insurance. Ten days ago, 15 days ago when this happened, the family had no insurance. They're already $3 million in hospital debt because they went from one hospital to another with their son. That's not cheap, guys. Care flight's, what, 50 grand without insurance? That's just for the care flight. That's not the x-rays, the PET scans, the CT scans, and they're doing that 15 times a day. You want to know how I know? Because I flipped a car 20 years ago and broke everything from here to here. So I know what goes on when you do that kind of damage. They had no insurance. They're all over Facebook. It comes up on my feed. They go onto their personal page and start reading what it's all going on. They're in the horse business, guys. That means they're self-employed. There's absolutely no reason why these people shouldn't be on health care just because somebody hasn't told them, hey, you can get affordable health insurance, I promise. Nobody's bothered to say that to them. So I got on there, typed on there, and all I said, it's a family going through a lot, so you don't want to pry, right? This isn't an ambulance chase opportunity, but I know that boy's going to need years and years of physical therapy to possibly relearn how to walk. He's going to need years of surgery. Who knows what he's going to have to go through? And they're going to start saying no once it's no longer life-threatening without insurance. 
So I got on there and I said, I can help. Call me. That's all I said. You talk about grassroots and branding. About 50 people jumped on that and said, call her. Call her now. She can help. Promise you she can help. She called me. She called me on May 31st. I had her insured on June 1st. The whole family. And they're on a zero dollar plan with a $750 max out of pocket. They were already selling everything they owned, their horses, their trailers, their trucks, their ranch. They don't have to do that now. They can breathe. And we're also fighting, because he's at Cook's now, to get some grants and some other stuff. Because not everything's covered. ACA is not perfect, especially in Texas. It's all HMO, right? But it's going to help. And they will no longer deny service because now he has insurance. So what we do, even in the ACA business matters. It's not just our 65-year-old confused seniors that need our help. There are families every day walking around uninsured because the last time they looked, they couldn't afford it. That's not the case today. So if you're not shouting from the rooftops that I can help, it's like your neighbor not knowing what you do. So I'm a realist. There's pros and cons in everything, right? So the pros, millions of families need our help. Pro, one certification, guys. You only got to score a 70 or better. It's free. You can take it as many times as you want. <laughs> there are no carrier certifications in this. Now, if you get into the state exchange states, you got to do their state exchange certifications too. But still, no carrier certs. And on FMF or FFM, if they keep it up, a couple years ago, after you've already done this certs once, now you just have to sign an attestation that, yeah, you know what you're doing. <laughs> so you don't have to do certs anymore. It's wonderful. Hey, yeah. hip, take a hint. <laughs> <laughs> We all know Lorenzo or whatever his name is, you know, needs his Part D plan. He's going to get a penalty. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Marketing is so much less restricted. What Medicare beneficiary? Because I went on there and be like, I can help. Call me. <laughs> you can't do that. You can with under 65. You can with ACA. You can with dental. You can with cancer. You can with hospital indemnity. You can help. Tell them. You don't be shy about it. Just don't lie about it. <laughs> you can quote and enroll somebody in 15 minutes once you figure out what you've done, what you're doing. Maybe you've got a huge family with adopted kids and foster kids and divorced parents and kids from over there. Eh, maybe it takes 30. <laughs> don't laugh. I got a family of 12. None of them are theirs. <laughs> it's a whirlwind. <laughs> Those take a little longer, but it still can be done. And it's quick, much quicker than Medicare. If you're using Health Sherpa, quote, enroll, same portal, super easy. Wonderful. So the cons. <laughs> Biggest con, you have to renew every year. So what does that mean? You're gonna have to have an assistant or staff after your first year guaranteed. Because you can't enroll all the new people and re-enroll all the old people at the same time. So you need help. Sorry, you're making all that money. You need to hire somebody and help somebody else out in the business. I'm not really sure that's a con, but you do have to do it. People are like, well, why? Why do you have to do that? It makes no sense. Doesn't the policy renew? Well, yeah. And they get renewal documents in September that don't have the updated subsidies on them. So they think they still got a zero dollar plan or they think they still got a $150 plan and come January, they got a bill for 600 bucks. And they're screaming at you because you did it. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. You refused to pick up your phone for the 45 times I called during open enrollment so we could set this up. <laughs> oh. But still, you have to do that. One of the other biggest cons is you have paperwork. Not everybody has paperwork, so breathe. It's, you know, 
If they've been on ACA for a while, they usually don't have to do paperwork anymore. But if they're first time ACA, yeah, you usually got to prove income or prove citizenship, something. One of the biggest things to get away from paperwork is usually on your women who have been married multiple times and they're going to give you their current last name that they're using. Double check on what's on their social security card. That'll solve that problem most of the time. They can go under the name they want, but when there's this little part where it says, I know their social security number, and is this the name on the card? Verify that, and if it's not, then just type in the proper name. That clears that one out pretty easy. The other big one is income. Income's a big one. Especially self-employed, their taxes never look the same, but a lot of times you can write a letter to the government, especially if they're newly self-employed, which a lot of people are right now. We all got into the COVID, work from home, I'm starting my own company. Not just insurance, it's everywhere. There's all these TikTok millionaires, YouTube millionaires now, you know, that's their brand, that's their company. I have no idea what they're selling. <laughs> Some of them have our accountants. <laughs> they make the most. <laughs> Don't send them your taxes. They have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> and the other major thing is you need some basic knowledge of taxes. Because, you know, depending on if they're a W-2 employee, a 1099 employee, a K, a LLC, K Carp, you got to understand which line you got to put in there for income because it's all different. That's where a lot of people kind of screw up on the self-employed. I see it all the time in area. I live in a farm and ranch area, lots of dairies, donut shops. I had a donut shop come in during COVID. Him and his wife were paying $2,000 a month for insurance from the company two doors down. They've been on this Blue Cross policy for years. And uh, they were scared because they thought they were going to have to close down their business because they couldn't afford the health insurance at $24,000 a year, and they were only making $39,000. I don't know what the man spoke. It's some sort of Korean, Chinese, I, I don't even know, guys. We're doing like hand gestures, trying to talk. I got nobody in Stephenville, Texas that speaks this, except maybe another donut shop guy, and I don't know those people. So we're doing hand gestures. We ultimately finally get a son on the phone that's in another state. And I told his son, I'm like, look, just have your dad bring me his taxes. Everything I could possibly need will be on that. So he told his parents that. They came back the next day with his taxes. We went instantly from $2,000 to a $0 plan. They were bawling. We couldn't speak, but they could see on the screen it said zero. <laughs> Numbers are the same in every language. <laughs> they no longer had to close their business. And about once a month, they come visit me, and they live about 30 minutes away. The first time they come visit me, they try to hand me a $5,000 thank you check. Wow. Couldn't take it. Rules, regulations. But try to explain that to these people, especially in their culture. I'm offending them, and I can't explain why. Ultimately, we got it figured out. They took their check and went home. The next day, they came back with about that many boxes of donuts, <laughs> crepes, <laughs> breakfast burritos. My office staff, they won't even talk to my staff. They will stand there. They come in, and they just stand there. And the staff has finally figured out who this couple is, because I've had some staff turn over since I originally wrote them. And they just come back to my office, and like, your people are here. <laughs> That's all they say. And I look out my window, and I say, I'm like, OK. So I go out there and they'll have a letter or something and I'll look up and I'll just give them a thumbs up like don't worry about it or like hold on a minute and I'll go fix it and we're good. <laughs> and when I do that, then the wife goes back out to the car and she comes back in with donuts. <laughs> <laughs> They're part of the reason why I look like a donut. <laughs> but my staff loves it. They eat the donuts. I take the breakfast burritos home to my uh, husband. He loves breakfast burritos. They make a good one too. But they're grateful. They were going to have to close their business down, y'all. We're here to help, right? 
I have no idea how I'm doing on time. I black out at these things. Am I fast, slow? Okay. <laughs> so who wants to sell ACA? I can teach ACA with a person if they're committed and really get on the calls. I can teach you how to sell ACA and close ACA in a week. It is not hard. You already know what a deductible coinsurance and all that crap is. You just got to learn a new system and learn how to pitch it. It's not hard. The marketing's easy. When I said once you get 100 people, they're going to start referral business. Bussy over here is about ready to jump out of her chair, shaking her head because she knows it's true. They just flock to you once they know you do it. Now, I'm a big believer in conferences. I love these things. That's where me and Tony met. Me and Buffy met. Malia, Jackie, Bobby. I mean, there's so many of you guys. And there's actually a bunch of faces in here I don't know, which is really nice. I guess it's because we're in a different state, Utah. <laughs> but I'm a big believer in conferences. But the thing about conferences, you've got to take something home and implement it. And that's what most people fail to do. They get all hyped up. They're excited. And for the first week back in the office, they're killing it. And then life happens, right? They tell me about life. I had a husband in the military. I was raising a son by myself, starting a brand new business. Had an elderly mother that was sick, who passed a few years ago. My father, who's gone cuckoo and remarried. A man I've never seen before. I didn't realize how much my mother cracked that whip until now. <laughs> Kept him in line. <laughs> But you got to implement this stuff. So I have homework for you. And it's not even about what I do, what I talked about. It's just general homework. And anybody that does it and turns it back into me, I'll give you a free 30-minute coaching session on AC or anything else you want. Here's the homework. Scan the QR code because you, you're not going to be able to print the slides off. So I'm going to have to email you these two pieces. The first one. I want you to do is the letter to yourself, your future self. I want you to talk about where you are today, maybe what you've learned this week, and where you want to see yourself by next year at this conference. Put a deadline on it. We're going to give it a year. Christian, are we doing this again next year? We'll find out later. <laughs> <laughs> I can read between the lines, can you? <laughs> so write that letter. In a year from now, you should have grown, doubled even, tripled, depending on where you're at. The other one is going to help you get there. Problem, solution, action. There's 10 slots. I want you to write 10 problems down in your, either your personal life or your business because they interconnect whether you think they do or not. They do. 10 problems right now that you have that you've probably been avoiding and ultimately is holding you back and you don't even know it. So write 10 problems. <laughs> then, most people actually know the solution. Like, my problem is I'm too busy writing thank you cards and I can't write new business. Well, your solution is you need an assistant. <laughs> Simple, right? But what are you going to do? What's the action you're actually going to take to fix that problem? You have the problem, you have the solution. What's the action you're going to do? Are you going to put on Indeed ads? Are you going to run Facebook ads? Are you going to call your friend that really needs a job? What is the action to go with the solution? You be honest with yourself. You write 10 out. You write 10 solutions. You write 10 action steps and start crossing them off. You'll be amazed where you're at in 90 days. I promise. That's all I got, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, Utah. We got about five minutes for a few questions for Medicare Wonder Woman. If anyone's got one. Well, I'm, Rebecca and I have talked about this. 
I live in Florida, yes, in a rural community. Yes, ma'am. Florida blue. <laughs> yep. Can't do ACA unless it's on a just a referral basis. With Any that carrier. Yes. There's other carriers. We're in Not Florida in my blue. area. That's literally the only carrier you have. Yeah, there in, in your there's county. Enough, yeah, and there's um, another little carrier that my clients that are on ACA like. I Maybe. want off. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know there's some expansion going into Florida with some carriers that aren't currently there. So they're coming. Um, we can look at the county. But ultimately, if you do have this problem, I live in a one. My county, there's only one product available. This has been that way the whole time. Everywhere around me is multiple, but I'm a one product county. But Florida Blue is a little different because she's right. It's capped. If you don't know that, you have to work for Florida Blue to sell it. Now, if you sell it on her server, you can get a referral fee. So you're not completely out, right? If you got to sell it, sell it there, get a referral fee, sell them some dental, sell them some cancer, build that funnel for Medicare, which I forgot to mention. You know, ACA, they're the pro, is you're building your Medicare funnel. They age and eventually build that Medicare funnel. Stack other things. And the other thing is branch out. How many does the county next door have? Uh, that's the same. Well, Florida's a big state. <laughs> and I'm in a very rural North Florida. Yeah. So you just got to branch out to the counties. And it's not um, hard with ACA and Florida social Florida Blue is not just captive anymore. Uh, it is. ACA it is. Oh, ACA, that's right. We just have the Medicare shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, it is for ACA, Tony. <laughs> I was so close to getting a contract. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Do you have any other states? I, I do, but I don't really work in other states. Just when friends move, I, and clients move, I stay okay. in the region. Well, can I be very honest and very Please. maybe hard? Yeah, do that. Those are just excuses. OK, you're right. That's a problem. Find your solution and then implement an action step. Thank you. Any other questions? We got a few more. Yeah. Do you think, uh, because all these five millions that they're coming from Medicaid, mm, is the possibility that the ACA is going to stay all year round like an SCP or whatever thing it is because it's like a, we're not going to have enough time to enroll all these people? Well, I think, you know, we already have the low income SCP right now, which has turned yeah. that into yeah. a low income uh, SCP a year round opportunity. I think that's going to stick around as long as Biden's in office. Your Medicaid, Medicaid people will most likely fall into that. Now, there'll be some people that don't that really should have never been there and got in because of unemployment opportunity or something and then ultimately just got stuck there um, because of COVID. But most of those people are probably going to qualify in your low income subsidy, so that would buy you more time. Hi, Rebecca. My name is Moses. I came from California. Uh, Sorry. We love to help that. people. <laughs> and uh, um, in the past uh, seasons, I help a lot of people with medical. So medical doesn't pay anything. Nope. With this new um, concept with the glitch, the family glitch, and the, um, the new medical, so medical in California is going to switch automatically the, the people to the mm -hmm. plan. If the client is in your book of business, boom, you get the client. So it's really, really nice concept with ACA. I feel the, the future is there in ACA. The problem with Medi-Cal or California in general, and I, I grew up there, I spent 24 years of my life there in Southern California between LA and San Diego before I made it over to Texas. Um, the problem with California, Yes, it's ending, but Medicare, Medicaid, or Medicaid, Medi-Cal in California, the income is so much higher there, right? And it's expanded state. So a lot of your people probably will still stay on Medi-Cal in that state. And I was having this conversation, believe it or not, in the bathroom before I came up with another agent, because she's out there too. She's like, well, how do you advertise for that? Well, raise your income bar a little bit. You know, search for those people between like 40 and 100,000 instead of the under 40,000. You know, they've raised that ceiling where 400%, you can get a subsidy. I mean, I'm writing families that make $200,000 a year if they got some kids, they're getting subsidized. So instead of focusing on the people that make 20,000 a year in California, focus on the people that make 60,000 a year in California. Got time for one more. Nice and loud. Extend that Medicaid funding. 
Well, they've already done it to July. It's really, once the health emergency is over, that goes away. So once they de declare truly the health emergency is over, it's going to go away. The fact that we're no longer wearing masks on airplanes is pretty much a given that the emergency part is over. So they're predicting in October it's going to end. And people are already coming off of it for various reasons, you know, because they got to still submit sometimes when they have changes, and sometimes when they have a change, it kicks them off. I've, I've run into people all the time that just lost their Medicaid, or kids aging in, now they're 19, things like that. But I don't see, they might extend until the end of the year, but I think they're gonna try to stop it right before open enrollment, so we can get them all moved over. Excellent, Rebecca Davis, everybody. Thank you.